this is Ardine and you are listening to do an ASEAN The Voice of Discovery and Sharing. And today we have a very interesting guest. Uh, her name is Cindy and she's actually an editor of a baby magazine. It's called Baby Talk. Hi Cindy, are you there? Hi, hi Alin. Yeah, I'm right here. Hi, good morning. <laughs> good morning, hi. So uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, a guide for new parents uh, who have uh, young, uh, their, their young toddlers and how to handle them and, you know, how, what to expect when you have a baby. Uh, mm-hmm. But before we discuss more about that, I just want to know, like, what do you do in Baby Talk and what usually you cover? Ah, uh, Okay. So, um, hi, I'm Cindy. I'm the editor of Baby Talk magazine. And, um, well, Baby Talk is actually uh, a magazine. Uh, it was first published in August 2011. And I've been the editor for this magazine since January 2012. And uh, it's a pregnancy and baby care magazine. It revolves around topics and issues beginning from fertility, conception, and then it moves on to pregnancy, childbirth, postnatal, prenatal care, and so on and so forth. Okay, before it proceeds to baby care, toddler care, and of course parenting issues as well. So in a nutshell, actually, baby talks about pregnancy beginning from conceiving right up to babies, right up to uh, the age of three. So um, so when I was approached to take on the editorship of this magazine, I wasn't really sure if it was for me because uh, it's clearly... <laughs> A, a magazine for young parents, you know. So mm-hmm. um, yes. <laughs> so to put it more precisely, it's a magazine about babies, literally babies. Well, my babies. Um, well, I have four of them, by the way, but they aren't exactly babies anymore. They are, um, they're 23, 22, 21, and 15. So I wasn't exactly sure uh, how was I, uh, how was I going to fit in with this publication. So uh, when I was given a couple of days to sit on it and think of this offer. And I realized I was actually the perfect candidate for four times the hands-on experience and this whole pregnancy baby care thing is really, you know, is right up my alley. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, that's why I took it. And I'm happy to say that it's one of the best decisions I've ever made. Mm-hmm. Because, so, um, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Uh, in terms of baby talk, uh, mm-hmm. I'm just quite curious, like, uh, when, when you started working with baby talk, oh, mm-hmm. what surprises you when it comes to... Um, I mean, you, you are a mother yourself, but what surprises yes, you when it comes to things about babies that new parents do not know? Uh, okay. So, uh, the thing about new parents is, um, uh, if you're talking about expectations, are we talking about expectations here? Yeah. Okay. So, um, if I were to speak truthfully, I would say, do not expect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, because, uh, okay, firstly, not every pregnancy, in the first place, the pregnancy itself, not every pregnancy is the same, which means that some might go through this nine-month period like it's a walk in the park, where else some might feel like it's the worst nine months of their lives, you know? Mm-hmm. Or you might feel like healthy one moment and then really, really sick the next. So <laughs> one, so, or, or you can even, you know, actually, this actually happens, you know, you can actually develop a, um, a medical condition. That, you know, it actually comes on during pregnancy and you will be needing specialized care for yourself and, and, and stuff like that. So if I were to speak truthfully, I would say, yeah, don't, don't expect. In fact, as many new parents will find out, you, you will tend to place a lot of expectations when you're pregnant. And perhaps it, it's, it can be even natural to do so, but you, you're you probably making all sorts of plans for your baby, like, uh, you know, when your baby's going to take a nap or, you know, or some might think, oh, my baby's not going to keep me up all night. I'm going to train my baby to have his milk on time or sleep on time or sleep when I switch off the lights, you know, and all those sort of things. Well, we can all have our plans, but later on, um, for the most of us, we will discover that those were just plans. Mm-hmm. You know, in fact, they weren't uh, even plans. They were more like fantasies, actually. Oh, really? Fantasies? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> why, why, why it because, is just yeah, mere I, I fantasy? Say that, I say that because um, through my experience and uh, through the experience of all, uh, I mean, through the stories of, of everyone else who has babies, every baby is different, okay? Mm-hmm. So we, we, we have books, magazines, child, child care experts, and so on and so forth, and, and these can guide you, and, and we can provide you with, with an arsenal of information and ideas, but at the end of the day, uh, you will have to figure out uh, how you'll be applying all that information in your life as a new parent. Okay? Mm-hmm. 
So at the end of the day, while well, you're essentially, it's essentially important for you to be equipped with all this, this information and, uh, and, and whatever you need on, on, on pregnancy and baby care. But you, it will make you more confident as a new parent, okay? But in real life, you're bound to discover that the experience will be a real teacher because um, that, that, that's what's most important. You, you have to learn as you, as you take it day by day. Mm-hmm. And for, for, new, for new mothers, especially mm-hmm. those uh, who are, uh, you know, do, those who are conceived for the first time, they, mm-hmm. they usually, I mean, they usually would uh, be depressed and they, they call it postnatal depression. But uh, uh-huh. how to o- overcome this and what is it actually? And, and do, does it like, uh, th- does all my uh, does all mother you know have this kind of uh, depression or is it like just uh, selectively depending on uh, their okay. situation? Mm, okay, postnatal depression is not something to be taken lightly. Okay, so uh, yes, it can be it can be real really serious. And the thing about this uh, postnatal depression is you might have it and you might not even know that you have it. So it it, it can seem just like you know, plain old tiredness or just plain old moodiness or, and stuff like that. But the the the, um, the trick to know whether it, it is in fact postnatal depression is uh, how long does it prolong. If it's just uh, there one minute and then it goes off the next, then it's probably just a, uh, some sort of mood or, you know, some sort of um, chemical reaction, you know, to, to your breastfeeding or or something else. But the thing is, if you if you if you experience um, prolonged periods of really moodiness and uh, depression, and you're feeling down, and you do not have appetite to eat, and you do not feel like holding your baby, you do not feel like feeding your baby, you know, when when you experience all these kind of things, it it is time to get help. You 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 do not take it lightly, or you don't sit and hope that it go it goes off, you know. Or some of them might think, you know, I'm supposed to be happy. I don't want people to think that I'm depressed. That, that, that's so embarrassing, you know. Mm-hmm. Everybody's expecting me to be happy. But so what are the I'm symptoms? Uh, the symptoms would probably be, um, the, the first and most telling symptom would probably be that um, you are not bonding with your baby well. Mm-hmm. In, other words, in other words, you don't feel like holding your baby. When you look at your baby, you do not feel the joy that, that, that a new mom would normally feel. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, yes, and mm-hmm. then you will feel tired all the time. You will not have appetite to eat. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and how yeah. to overcome this for those mothers that have uh, postnatal depression? Uh, you will have to seek medical help. In other words, you will have to bring it up with your doctor, and your doctor will will, will probably um, um, decide what's the next course of action. Mm-hmm. Whether you need medications. Or whether you just need some uh, some sort of um, advice or support from you know um, a non medical support like mm-hmm. uh, maybe maybe you can um, you know, your 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 maybe maybe as a couple you know your doctor will advise your husband or or other members of the family you know can you please uh, you know um, um, not make things too difficult mm-hmm. for the new mom, you know, help her out a bit, you know, and stuff like that. I see. Yeah. Um, nowadays, uh, a lot of new parents, uh, they are very concerned about raising a family. So they, they by all means, they prepare themselves up, they read a lot of guidebooks and all that. Mm-hmm. In fact, mm-hmm. uh, to some extent, uh, new parents are so concerned about things that are unnatural that they... Uh, they would make their own baby food for the babies and they make sure that they uh, breastfeed rather than, you know, buying all this uh, milk formula. Uh-huh. But you as an editor of a ma- baby magazine, uh, uh-huh. what is the right way to raise a baby so that the baby would, you know, grow up to be a happy, healthy child? Ah, okay. Wow. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's a loaded question. <laughs> yes, uh, that's a... There's a little more than one question actually there. Okay. So, um, okay. Why don't, why don't we start by uh, what not to do when, you, when, 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 when we're raising a baby, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, firstly, do not compare yours to another's. In other words, uh, I would say don't compare your baby to other babies. Lah. <laughs> what do you mean by don't compare? <laughs> is it like the typical atti- Asian attitude where, you know, my child um, is better than your child? Like yes. Kind of. Or why is your child better than mine? It's the same thing. <laughs> okay, so let's say if your friend's baby seems to be able to do some pretty impressive things, okay, for his age, doesn't mean your, your baby has to measure up to that. 
okay? So a, a parent must always keep in mind that uh, a baby is just really a really tiny human being, mm -hmm. okay? So they have their own way of growing up and developing and learning and so on and so forth. So I would say that as a new parent, you, mm, it would be good it would be good to have a general baby growth and development chart in hand. That means uh, these, these, these are kind of charts that uh, you can get online or you can even find them in any of our smart parenting guidebooks. So these charts will actually provide you an idea of how a normal pattern of um, growth and development would look like. For oh. example, at six months old, some babies will start to roll over and some will succeed and some will not. They might take a few more weeks or maybe a month or a month more or, or even more than that, okay? Mm -hmm. Or at 11 months, some babies will try to stand up, you know, for a few seconds unsupported and some might even wait for a month or two or, you know, or, or the, and these charts will even alert you if there is cause to be concerned. Like, for example, if your baby is nine months old and does not seem to be interested in trying to sit up or crawl, for instance, then you will have to bring it up with your doctor to rule out any serious um, issues, you know? you know, either in development or in health and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that's for expectations. Okay, getting back to your question about um, nutrition, is it? Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, actually, um, okay, you, first you have to understand why. Why is it that um, most experts, they, they encourage breastfeeding and they encourage uh, making your own baby food and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, I think you should know by now that um, more and more parents are, are jumping into the green bandwagon. This, uh, we have this whole um, organic, mm -hmm. uh, organic products and you know, you know, green baby products and all. This is all actually a matter of choice because um, some do it for the environment, some do it purely for the health because they do believe that um, it is much more better for your health and for your family's health to be taking in uh, less chemicals, for example. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, so it, it's actually a very personal choice. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you're talking about breastfeeding, that is, and um, this is something international, not just in Malaysia, it's the world over. It is recommended that you breastfeed your baby for at least the first, um, if you can, for the first two years, if not at least for the first 12 months, to give your baby a better chance of growing up into a, a healthy and um, a healthy and happy baby. Mm -hmm. And know? what about mm -hmm. the, the bonding between the mother and the child, or the father and the child? Should uh, both parents be at the side of the child during the first few years of his growth? Or sh should they just straight away send to the baby center whenever, I mean, if nowadays you, if we, we all understand that a lot of parents, they, both of them are mm. working adults. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good question, okay? <laughs> Because um, if you talk about uh, both parents working, I think that's more of a necessity than a choice for most of them. Um, most of them would say that um, we can't even, we, we simply can't survive on one income. So both parents have to go out there and we have to work and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that does not mean that the baby and the parent will not be able to, to bond. First of all, there will be medic, um, sorry, maternity leave. So. Uh, this will take anywhere from one month to uh, two or three months. It depends on um, where the parent's working. So as soon as your maternity leave is over, okay, yes, you, you're you going to have to send your baby somewhere. Okay, for the lucky ones, they get sent to grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncles, you know, and stuff like that. So the baby still have some family love going on there. And for those who really can't, well, they, they will have to send the baby to a daycare and stuff like that. So you can still make sure... Okay, your communication is important. You have to communicate with your with, with your uh, baby's um, caregiver. You know how what do you want your baby to be fed with. Okay, you should be able to to call and check on your baby anytime you want. And as soon as you you pick your baby up from the center, then you make sure whatever little time you have with your baby is made into quality time. That means uh, for the first few years, yes, it will be quite tiresome, troublesome. Okay. It might be taking a lot out of you, but you will have to do it as a parent. Mm -hmm. You have to do. You have to do whatever it takes to keep that bond. Um, to keep that bond with your baby, mm -hmm. so that your baby will know. You know that um, this is this is my family. This is my mom. This is my dad. This is my brother. This is my sister. You know, and he will grow up feeling secure and loved.
Mm-hmm. What about the family dynamics uh, when it comes to having a newborn baby? Let's say uh-huh. the first child or the first, mm-hmm. the first few child. I mean, um, the, for the parents, uh, for new parents especially, do they need to change their lifestyle to sort of be more? Um, I mean, to think more about the future of the child, the education, or the the, the cost of raising a child, mm-hmm. in essence. Okay. What, what 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 should parents do? I mean, in terms of expecting a child, what should they uh, prepare themselves in a way? Ah, uh, so um, are you talking about the cost of living here? Yeah? Uh, the cost, of, <laughs> yeah. In terms of the cost of living, the the, oh, wow. the psychological <laughs> challenge that the parent new parents need to face, because a, a lot yes. of new parents when mm-hmm. they have ch- uh, when they have a child, especially the first the first born, usually they have this fantasy that oh this is how a family would be you know happily ever after. But they then then they didn't realize that you know it's not easy to raise a child. Some should some childs some children can be very. Uh, I would say very uh, difficult in terms of d- b- uh, being cared of, but uh, as new parents, any new parents, what would you give the kind of advice to them so that they are able to face the challenge of the cost of living, the challenge of the, the, psycholo- the psychological challenge as well, as well as you know the emotional challenge uh, between uh, both parents as well. I think there's also a study that they have been done that usually mm-hmm. couples would would either break up the the first five years of marriage or they will mm-hmm. stay together for uh, for a long term mar- uh, marriage okay mm-hmm. mm, okay I will uh try to to answer that without sound like I'm reading a whole book to you <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 uh maybe we will we we'll try we'll try to talk about the um the initial the, the, your initial question that is the cost of living first. And it's true. Uh, it's getting more and more expensive to raise a baby. Okay, mm-hmm. so I would say that uh, before you even have a baby, before you even get pregnant, okay, mm-hmm. maybe you would like to sit down with your partner and actually do some research on what it's going to cost. Like, wh- where where do you want to have your baby? Where do you want to have your checkups? Okay, this is going to make a lot of difference because you will have um, you will have that information at hand. So, you know, okay, it's going to cost you this much for um, nine months of um, postnatal checkup, okay? And it's going to cost me this much to give birth. And if I have an emergency and if I'm, I, I'm not able to give birth normally, I'm going to have to have a cesarean. And, and if that happens, I'm going to have to have this amount of money aside to pay for that, mm-hmm. right? And then I'm going to have, ha- have to have this amount for some sort of postnatal care, you know, maybe I'm going to have a special package for myself and have someone come over and look after me and cook for me, you know, and stuff like that. Okay, so you, you have to factor in all of this if you really want to talk cost, okay? Mm-hmm. So if you really are serious about about um, um, not running into any kind of financial issues, then you will want to have to make those plans and make it early and have some reserves. Mm-hmm. So that would be the best way. And then, and then, you might even want to go and research on the cost of baby stuff, like how much is the, the, the setting up the whole nursery is going to cost, okay? Okay, what, uh, baby clothes, am I going to buy all new or am I going to buy some pre-loved items, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, and, um, you know, all, all the kind of things. And babies, they, okay, there, there might be some, um, what, what, what can I say, some sort of... Um, What's the word again? Um, conflicts here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whereas some might say that babies don't really need much to uh, for the first few years of life. They just need a place to sleep and uh, breast milk. Okay, and a few clothes. Okay. Whereas some will not hear of that. They will want uh, the, the whole, you know, from A to Z, you know, everything from, from baby bottles to baby toys to baby cribs to baby special rockers and walkers and, you know, mobiles and, and stuff like that. So it's up to you. What, how do you want to bring up your baby? If you, want it, if you want to bring up your baby in a simple way, then probably you will, you know, save a lot of money. Whereas if you, you only have to think about the cost of giving birth and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you want to go down the road of, you know, you know, you want to have, um, you want your baby to have every single thing that every other baby has, then you have to <laughs> sit down and count how much that's going to cost you, okay? Okay, that's just for the cost. And of course, don't forget that your baby's going to grow up and he or she is going to attend uh, preschool, you know, 
and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. uh, how how are you going to manage your finances to sustain all that? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's one. Okay, as for raising a happy baby, um, well, <laughs> but you can't actually train a baby or 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 you know guarantee that a baby is going to be you know happy and grow up. You know, to be to be happy all the time. Mm-hmm. But what you can do is, uh, you can always you can always encourage your baby to um, to be to to be um, a happy baby, and that's how and that's how you you have to set the example yourself. Uh-huh. Okay. So if you're so a happy you parent and you are not so a panicky parent and mm-hmm. you're not a tantrum throwing parent, then probably your your baby is gonna going to follow in your footsteps. Uh-huh. That means your child will be influenced by you. Lah. And how to keep mm. the relationship, you know, um, uh, I don't know what's the right word to say, but I guess uh, <laughs> how to get, uh, to make the bonding stronger between uh, both parents uh, and also between parents and the child when you already have a child because then your, your, your responsibility will be totally different. You don't have time for dating anymore. You don't have time to yourself anymore. So how do you mm-hmm. keep that balance? Um, okay, you have the, to make the psychological time. Yes, challenge. Yes. I, I I know many many parents uh, when they when they have the first child especially yeah? when they have the first child and like you said like you mentioned earlier there are a lot of um, breakups that happen during the first five years of um, of parenting of parenthood mm-hmm. right uh, and it, it it is quite true so this might happen if you do not actually make the effort to remind yourself that you you are a new parent now but you still have a husband or wife. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you have to make you have to make time. You will have to try to make arrangements for you know someone to see the baby for a while, maybe just for a few hours, while you take your wife or your husband out, okay, mm-hmm. for a dinner or a movie or just you know anything at all. Mm-hmm. Of course, we're not asking you to leave <laughs> the baby uh, at, 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 with somebody for a whole month and you disappear. No, that, that's not what we're asking. But um, what you can do is. Um, yes, you can actually plan something. Mm-hmm. Plan. You, ha- you have to make plans. You, it won't just happen by yourself. And nobody's going to come up to you and say, you know, hey, uh, why don't the two of you just uh, go out and let me see the baby? No, that, uh-huh. it might happen, but not very likely. So you have to make you have to make the uh, effort. So the life of parents is actually all about planning. Good planning meaning you have a good, healthy life for yourself, your spouse, as well as your children. Yes, of course. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you can't plan out everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, there will be times when you have to make split, split second decisions. But there are things that you can plan for, and there are things that um, you can do to make yourself and your life with your new baby easier for yourself. Mm-hmm. So these are the kind of things that um, you first of first and foremost you have to have a cool head all the time. You cannot be the type of of um, person who is always panicky. That means that every little thing that happens to you. Okay, or your child, the first thing you do is panic, you know, mm-hmm. and you start, um, you know, uh, crying or calling for help and all this kind of things. So, no, you, um, you, you try not to do that mm-hmm. because uh, these are the kind of things that, that feed up. Actually, I'm talking about, um, I'm actually talking about uh, not, not showing a panicky side of you when you are raising your kid because that is actually not very good for your baby either, mm-hmm. okay? So if there's a situation and um, babies and toddlers are all mischief makers, so panic only makes it worse. So if there's an emergency situation, you take a deep breath and calmly decide your next course of action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So anyway, <laughs> thank you very much, Cindy, okay. uh, for sharing with us about how to uh, raise a child and also you know, how to be a good parent to your child. Thank you very much and all the best, uh, all the best for Baby Talk magazine. You're welcome. Thank you, Aline. Thank you. Yeah.